Okay, so why don't we uh, begin? Um, so my name is Randy Labonte. I'm from Vancouver, Canada, area just north of it. Um, basically, uh, this session is talking a little bit about a crosswalk between design principles and the NSQOL standards, as well as quality matters. Uh, although it was, I didn't include quality matters in there as part of the, the work that we've done as well. Um, I live in a place called Zwokwe, which is the uh, indigenous name for Half Moon Bay. Uh, no, not the California Half Moon Bay, but uh, the Sunshine Coast of British Columbia is north of Vancouver, 40 minute uh, ferry ride. Uh, so it, it is somewhat rural, but to have full cellular coverage as well as uh, fiber optics, which is why we moved there because it's the center of grandchildren for us now. So uh, we used to live on Vancouver Island, but the Coast Salish communities have been there for years. And I've been most impressed with uh, the the Shishalf who run most of, of the in enterprise inside of our community. So a lot of the recycling, but also very environmentally focused. So uh, it's more than just saying thanks for the use of your land. It's more about thanks for being here to help keep stewarding it. The Candy Learn Network um, that we have formed came out of my natal times working with London and online learning and, and now graduated to be in partnership with DLAC and, and Ditch, the DLC. And John Watson has come to uh, us Canadian events as well as us coming to U.S. events along the way. So we're a pandemic, uh, pan-Canadian sort of network. We came together to try to share practices and also uh, have work in collaboration with Michael Barber uh, with regards to research. So Michael, why don't you say hello and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, in the interest of time, I'll just say that I'm Mike Barber. I'm at Torrey University of California, although I'm a native of Newfoundland, Canada. And uh, I've been uh, doing research and partnering with uh, Candy Learn since its inception about a decade ago, uh, primarily through this uh, annual State of the Nation report. Uh, and hopefully you got a chance to chat with Randy around the poster yesterday, uh, but also on this project as well. So back to you, Randy. Thank you, Mike. And so it, besides uh, working in partnership with, with Mike, in the uh, the State of the Nation, which was started way back at the beginning before in, in INACL, uh and done independently in some of the years without sponsorship by uh, Mike, and that tells you what how dedicated he is. Now working together, we found a much more synergy, which is good. But we've also done other projects, and this is one of them that we're doing right now in the midst of it. But we did uh, an online tutoring study as well as looking at uh, the pandemic piece that I also did a table talk on here as well. And the design's principles are part of this, uh, but we're doing the crosswalk now that we're going to hopefully publish in the, as well uh, afterwards. So this is more of an active ongoing project that we're involved in right now. Uh, and so the thing that's interesting is how we define things. And I got into a table talk about definitions of terms on hybrid or virtual or blinded. And it's like, please don't define, don't use words that try to summarize something that you think makes it simpler it makes it more complicated. So, but because policies are used, uh, we define them as being rules and regulations from authorities. Quality is not definable in my world. Quality is a pursuit. It's about having a mission statement that allows you to pursue that goal of quality, which is a vision. And if you're worth your salt, your vision keeps changing because if you get there and you achieve it, then it's just time not, actually, I don't think that really happens. And standards, uh, in in our view, <clears> or <throat> my view, I guess, I'm not sure whether might you share this, are uh, expectations or benchmarks that you can measure. So they are not necessarily, like to me, quality and standards don't go together. Quality is a pursuit. Standards give you steps and measures along the way, is the way I would look at it and view it. And then all of, we did some research and looking at the voices of teachers uh, who teach online, started in British Columbia, and then we pushed it across uh, nationally across Canada uh, and came up with these eight design principles. But the concepts, guidelines about the educational programs, material systems, as well as the content. So uh, crosswalking them to other standards was an interesting exercise to see where there was some overlap. But these were really came from teachers, focused on teachers in terms of their practice. So the initial research came up with eight and it was validated across Canada of 
And basically, in summary, and I'm going to give you a link to them as well, that you can find them at bit.ly, uh, Caddy Learn Design is a summary of those. Uh, but it's the key ones were access to models of effective e-learning, ongoing professional learning opportunities specific to the practice, an understanding of what engagement means in digital, not only for themselves and teachers, but for parents and students as well, and key leaders in the district. Know how to enhance relationships and fostering connections online was the fourth one. Understanding technologies that they enable, but don't dictate. So don't follow the technology first, is basically make sure that what you do is follow the pedagogy and then apply the technology to support the, the pedagogy and what you're trying to get as accomplishments. <clears throat> but they also said that special preparation and mentorship throughout the career cycle was important. So mentoring was a critical part of that, both on early entry into teaching online, but also in ongoing for that. And always looking to exemplars and other teachers who have done some things, which is why the value of the digital learning collaborative here is so important. And there's a probably at least about 50 to 60 of us Canadians who come are here today uh, who are part of this, but also we have other similar um, ones in Canada that as Tani learned, we partner with all of those in the provinces. Research specific to e-learning practice. And that's one of the core things that we can do through our network. And then the other one was, was really important. We're recalling that this came out of pandemic uh, times, but a focus on health, wellness, and well-being specific to teaching and learning online because of the fact that it's, there's constraints with the technology that make it different for us. So the design principles, we're looking for exemplars, which can relate to standards, which can also relate to, to good practice. So there's a, a Google Doc there if you want to scan or just go to bit.ly DLAC 23-design. Again, with bit.ly is case sensitive. Um, if you want to add, add your own voice, please do so uh, in the document while we sort of give you a brief overview about the methodology and what it is that we did with the iNACL pieces. Uh, Michael, before, because there's kind of scanning some things here, anything else that you want to add in before we jump into what we did? No, I think you've covered pretty much everything that's there. Um, uh, I think the one thing that you may have touched on but not made um, obvious was that uh, this was originally done um, in British Columbia um, as part of a provincial study uh, because BC has historically been the jurisdiction that's had the highest level of K-12 online learning activity. And after the initial principles were created, then we uh, further validated them through a national study. Fair enough, and I should actually also do full disclosure. Uh, <clears throat> I was uh, brought on as a consultant for the BC Ministry of Education when they were revamping this to look at a quality assurance model so met with a panel of colleagues and like-minded folks, and we had indicated and did a literature review and did all of that and followed up with, with the report. But as part of the last the step in the process, we believe very strongly that the voices of teachers who will be governed or at least working with the quality assurance process in their own practices, that their voices be included. The ministry was not able for um, to, for whatever reason, to actually have us do that. So we, we uh, went to CandyLearn to do use CandyLearn as a vehicle to create that research, but it was done on a condition, and I was the chair of the quality panel. The condition was we would do that if the ministry agreed that it could be part of our report to them in terms of informing their quality assurance program. It's since been changed to accountability and quality assurance. It has not been released from in British Columbia. So we have no idea. Part of this work as well, we're going to bring back to that BC ministry for their own considerations. And that should help strengthen that we would probably do this if we can to all of the other of the provinces and territories to share this quality uh, process and the results from it uh, as well. So, what what did we do? So basically, you don't have to capture this. It's going to be published at some point in time, but right now this is still very draft. But what we did was we looked at the, the principle, the first one, 
which was specific to uh, looking at courses and materials. And then we matched to each of the sort of the principles of the NSQL program standards, teaching standards, and course standards. We also uh, did this for, for each of them. So the first two you can see here. And when you look at the second principle, uh, which was requiring timely, relevant professional learning opportunities, uh, the teaching standards came through nicely. Course standards did not. Course standards did in the first design principle. But these were done independently. So the question is, we're not sure exactly what we're going to arrive at with recommendations afterwards or considerations, but it's interesting to see how these fall together. We also went back and looked at quality matters uh, with some of the rubrics and the other standards that were there. And again, core standards about access to models of effective of teaching and learning and open curated resources. So again, the course standards of QM as well as NSQO all speak to that. But what was interesting when we looked at the standards in the K-12 rubric for quality matters is the online instructor sort of model, uh, the, the different sections there spoke to this as well, as well as in the second principle, when we looked at it, uh, in terms of the alignment, the alignment was with the instructor um, sort of uh, model that was there for them. So um, anything else to add in on those that initial look? Okay, so this is a little bit more about the methodology in terms of how what we found. So that's what we, the, the methodology, what we started to do. Here's what happened. So you're not going to read this, but you can get visualize it. So, so Mike, go ahead. Yeah, one of the things that we did and, and one of the reasons why I added that little bit extra is because one of the main criticisms of a lot of standards that get put out there is they don't go through the same sort of rigorous methodology that you often find um, normal standards development would go through outside of our field. Um, so the, the multi-stage process that Randy described in British Columbia and then nationally, and even with this one, um, as we did it, we looked at having essentially uh, pairs of reviewers that looked at each of the principles and then compared each of the standards to try to find alignment. And they did this independent of each other so that we could look to see how much inter-rater reliability happened across each of the individuals. Um, one of the things that we did find was that there was uh, well over 90% reliability between the independent reviewers of this. I think the exact number was something like 92.8% or something. Uh, so, you know, and 80% is normally considered uh, the standard that you look to aim for. So uh, we were quite ha happy with that. And then that's another set of the standards. I guess we're looking at each of the ones here. So then we did the same thing at QM. Okay, and then the, the, what was interesting about this is when we looked at the QM again, the the uh, the instructor skill set was a better match, but that's because the original intention of looking at the design principles was the voices of those instructors in terms of what they needed to have as support, how they needed to build their own practice, and what they needed to help support themselves, which is where we ended up with the sort of the wellness side of things. Basically, they had a better alignment to the notion of principles. When you think about when Randy began, he talked about the differences between standards and principles. And of the five sets we had, these were the ones that were closest to being principles from the beginning. Yes. So we're going to continue through that work. Um, and this is part of it. So it's basically what we're trying to do now is build a stronger relationship, but also come back to the Christine Volker area quality matters, as well as the NSQL team to look at uh, what the gaps were. So we have really dug in deeply into uh, why there was gaps in terms of some of the standards and where they might go. So to help inform are the design principles and, you know, strong enough and based on the original piece that we've done and where might we go sort of as a next step. Um, we already have some ideas about how it can fit, uh, and in on Monday, I think it was Monday session where uh, I jumped in when there was a panel on on the whole crosswalk with Dennis and framework, which works very very well for here in the U.S. There is no such framework that's used like that in Canada. However, um, because it has evolved as being an important benchmark for the evaluation of teachers in the U.S. Uh, that crosswalk is important around sort of the practices to look for. 
But um, what's missing for a lot of this, and it, the first iteration of standards that I was involved with in, in British Columbia, um, was a conceptual framework because they just lists of checklists of things. But how does that relate to actual practice in terms of what theoretical models inform practice in online programs? So what we were looking for as part of that was a conceptual framework of model. And what we arrived at in British Columbia at that time and also recommended this time uh, in the work that they're doing is the community of inquiry model. Uh, so the, the social teaching and cognitive presences in that model fit nicely. There is also a 34 uh, question survey that is part of that research and it's been going on for what, 10 or 15 years, I think, hasn't it, Mike? Right? At least, I believe, because it's 2000 was when the COI was first created. So, so using that, because it's been cited in reference, it has some validity in speaking to what practices are. So putting the, the exemplars uh, within that question survey within the presences is an interesting way to, in which to inform a simple model to understand. So we don't have to use a definition, as you know how I feel about definition, to actually look at practice. And then the exemplars are there. And the word exemplar was deliberately chosen because they're not standards, which means I have to do it. It's standard. I should be able to do this because the conditions and, and the situation and context is so variable in the work that we do online with students or the locations or the skill sets or the technologies or, or, or there's so many variables is it does give exemplars of what you should be looking for. But if not, then the context is part of the relationship of understanding how best to look at that particular teacher practice or for me to self-reflect on my own practice. So let's stop for questions and then we'll roll into the next one. I think we'll be close to the time, maybe a little bit ahead. But some of you came here to look specifically and deliberately for this particular session. So Ask your questions or how did we inform or did we not inform? And what are you looking for next from this particular piece of work that we're doing?